What's up, everybody? Dan with Carly Suspension here. Uh, today, you see in front of me a product that looks very familiar, but probably slightly different. The Ford fabricated radius arms have now become the Ford adjustable radius arms. Still a fabricated product. Silhouette looks pretty much identical, but there are some subtle changes for you longtime fans who could probably pick them out by looking at them right now. The first change that we made is the way that we do the gusseting. We used to have a X gusset that went all the way through the arm. Um, it was a pretty complicated process to install everything, uh, put it in. I mean, we did a whole video on the manufacturing of these fabricated radius arms, and it's a super long process. Well, what happened was you guys ordered way too many of them, and they take a ton of time and skilled fabrication to put together. Uh, the back order got large enough that we had to do something about the design to make them easier to produce so we can start eating away at that back order and getting you guys your parts quicker. When we redesign a part, we try to make it better, uh, and we try to keep it the same price if we can, at least with material costs going up uh, and the price of these arms slightly going up, we did bring you a better product. So what you're looking at here, you have the full internal gusset system that we had in the old arm but uh, slightly different as you'll see the keyways tie in on the side instead of on the upper bend here on the arm. Uh, additionally you'll see on the very front we actually have the structure now tie into both the top plate and then we have it tie into the axle pocket as well. The construction of the arm is going to be pretty much the same in that you've got a 3 16 cold rolled US steel outer shell and a quarter inch internal gusset system. It's just overall the way it's put together is going to be a little bit different. Uh, again, easier to assemble and uh, ultimately stronger the way everything ties together. Additionally, you'll see that the limit strap tab is now part of the outer structure and the silhouette of the arm is just a little bit cleaner. Uh, more familiar points, the joint remains exactly the same. The way the housing goes together, again, is going to be a little bit different, but the 17.4 stainless 3-inch joint that we have in there, uh, it's a spherical bearing that's serviceable and replaceable, rebuildable, whatever you want to call it, uh, that remains exactly the same. Uh, we still use the limit strap kit up front. Uh, limit straps you can see here. Those, again, tie into the tab right here on the radius arm and uh, the limit straps. I mean, we could actually talk about for a little bit because we've never really covered those in depth with the old arm video. In fact, I think I completely uh, neglected to include them from that video. So uh, these are a U.S.-made quad wrap limit strap. The buckles on the ends are a 4130 heat-treated chromoly. And then additionally, we supply you with grade 8 hardware uh, as well as a uh, mounting clevis to go ahead and weld to the frame. So turning this into also a bit of an unboxing video, since these new arms do come with quite a bit more hardware here, uh, you'll notice that you do also get two arms, not just the one that you're seeing here. So a mirrored version of this, thanks to that tire pocket cutout, limit strap tab, certain things that are side specific on this arm. The decal obviously denotes to which side it goes. Uh, you've got your ABS line tab here, assembled to it with a little insulated P-clamp. And then this is where everything is new. At the front of the arm, you're gonna see down here, we've got an axle pocket. This little pocket is a doubler plate that we weld on and inside of it fits a keyed caster shim. Um, and it's, I guess, more a caster key than it is a shim, but you're going to get 16 shims with every arm that you purchase now. And that is four sets of four shims. There's one per side of each arm. Unlike an eccentric bolt, uh, or something where you loosen it and then you just spin it that can come loose when you get a big hit in the dirt or something along those lines. This keys in, once it's in and the bolt holds it in place, it's going nowhere. So you get four bags with the shims inside of them. You're going to get a one notch shim set, you're gonna get a two notch shim set, three notch shim set, and a four notch shim set. Because we're adding to the width with this doubler plate that actually keys in those shim sets, we're also providing you the hardware that you need uh, with a little bit more bolt length on it for those shim sets. Why all this extra hardware? Why do this in the first place? Well, again, we made a arm that was gonna be a bit quicker to produce, no easier really, uh, but a bit quicker to produce, and we wanted to get you guys a better product. And one thing that Ford guys are constantly talking about is the need for either more or just correct caster. 
These trucks have been coming super light for a long time. They corrected it for a little while, then they rolled it back. Some trucks within year ranges are good. Other trucks need all the help that they can get. Previously to this, we were using an alignment shim uh, that comes with the base suspension system that you put on from Carly. We're still going to include those. That's a $60 Band-Aid to a $1,400, $1,500 problem at this point. Uh, used to be a $1,400 problem. Now it's thereabouts of $1,500. Correcting at the upper ball joint is going to essentially roll that knuckle back but keep the axle kind of lean forward. What we're doing here is we're actually leaving your neutral shims in so your camber doesn't change, your toe doesn't change, none of that. And when you correct down at the axle pocket, it rolls that whole axle assembly back and keeps that ball joint and center alignment up top. So it's a much better way to handle the caster problem when you need to correct a couple or a few degrees rather than just the one degree. A one degree caster shim, even a two degree, doesn't really hurt anything up top. But uh, once you start getting beyond that, which a lot of these trucks do seem to need, it starts to bind up that ball joint around like the two and a half degree shims. Uh, you start to wear those inner axle seals by pulling the axles back within the axle housing. So those are all the things that you want to avoid. And with the amount of correction that people are now requiring in these trucks, we thought this to be a much better solution. I mentioned that there's one notch, two notch, three notch, and four notch on these caster key sets. What does that mean? Well, our old radius arms had one degree of caster already built into them. That is our one. So when we did these in CAD and we actually designed these arms, we wanted a one degree shim, a two degree shim, a three degree shim, and a four degree. And that's adding positive in one degree increments degrees of caster. Uh, that's what it does in CAD. So we went over to uh, one of our local installation facilities, a longtime trusted dealer, Domestic Diesel, out in Chino. Big shout out to John. He was kind enough to pull his existing Bitchin' Carly radius arms off, put them off to the side, put the factory radius arms on, neutralize his factory shim on the ball joint so that it was a, basically a zero camber reading on his Hunter alignment rack, uh, as well as whatever the neutral caster was, which on his truck was, I believe, around three degrees. By the time I showed up to the shop, everything was ready to rock and roll. The truck was on the rack. The factory arms were on the truck and the readout was already determined. So they were, they were waiting for me there. The whole point of going to domestic diesel was to take our plus one through four degree in our CAD program shims and see what that translated to on the truck, on our lift, on the alignment rack. Now, we knew it wasn't going to be exactly one, two, three, and four. The four and a half inch lift that John has, so it's a four and a half uh, or the five and a half kits that we sell for these super duties. Those have our radius arm drop brackets. So you're gonna notice that the arm is basically parallel to the ground. When you use a two and a half inch lift or our three and a half inch systems for the newer Super Duties, the arm comes from the factory location. So the pivot point doesn't drop. We cast or correct at the axle or at the ball joint, but that leaves the arm at a slight angle, which means that when you start rolling the axle position, it's slightly less correction than a flat arm on an A stock truck or B, you know, four and a half, five and a half inch kit where the radius arm is dropped to be perfectly parallel with the ground. With the neutral shims in place and the factory radius arms, John was sitting at three and a half and 3.6 degrees of caster. All in all, not bad. It shows that the radius arm drops are doing their job. Ford specs anywhere from three to four and a half degrees. He was right over three degrees. Truck drove fantastic. Um, no problems really to address, but everybody wants four to five degrees. Some even want a little bit more than five degrees. Truth be told, we tested our Super Duty up to 7.8 degrees of caster. We took it to full droop. The drive shaft spun with no binding. Uh, the thing tracked with no wandering issues. It had a nice return to center on it, kind of snapped back a little bit, but the front end felt really, really tight. There was no issue. So we wanted to take it to the extreme to see where we could really go with it and make sure that even in the most extreme circumstance nobody would be hurt by putting in the four knot shim and everything was you know good to go so anyway john was at three and a half and 3.6 degrees of caster so then we installed the fabricated radius arms on his truck or excuse me the adjustable radius arms on his truck and of course we did that with our one notch shim now you'll notice something else about these shims on the one and two notch, the notch is in one place. On the three and four, it's in another place. We did this by design because you've got this bolt 
with the washer on it and we wanted the notches to be visible with the bolt installed. So we shifted them around as the bolt position changes to ensure that you could look from the side and see exactly what shims were installed without having to pull the bolt out and double check everything. So we installed the arms on John's truck with the one notch shims. The result, it went up about a half of a degree. So we went to 3.9 and 4.0 from the 3.5 and 3.6. Uh, it wasn't the full degree that we wanted to see, but again, we were here for the testing. The process to remove the shims is as simple as kind of what you do to install the radius arms. You unload the suspension to kind of take the load off the bolt, remove the bolt, pop the shims out. Once the bolt's out, it's super easy. Uh, and then you put the new shims in and it's just all a matter of maneuvering things around, grabbing the tire, rolling it with the suspension kind of unloaded there uh, to get everything back together. Make sure the shim is fully seated, retorque it, and then once you have swapped those shims, there's a process by which you reset the Hunter machine uh, and the truck's position before it can take the new reading. It's not quite as easy as just clicking a button, but again, it was really cool to have one of these super sophisticated machines with a rack big enough to fit one of these lifted trucks. Uh, very, very rare these days. So again, big shout out to Domestic Diesel for having the right tools to get the job done. And additionally, having a rack that's smarter than what 90% of shops out there are using in that you can plug into the truck's computer, reset the, the lane departure stuff, the adaptive cruise control stuff. It's a great machine to have as these engineers go wild with all these new features of these trucks that a lot of people don't know have to be reset uh, in an alignment once you've modified your vehicle. I digress. We ended up putting in the two notch shims. We actually saw a little bit more correction than the first ones, but still not quite a full degree. It put us about 0.8 degrees over what that first shim was. We started at 3.5 and 3.6. The one notch bumped it to 3.9 and 4.0. The two notch bumped it to 4.8, 4.8, a total of 1.3 degrees of correction. We then repeated the process, swapped the shims over to the three notch. The three notch gave us another 0.7 degrees, uh, putting us at 5.4, 5.4, a total of two degrees of correction over the 3.5 that we started with. Lastly, we popped in the four notch shims. The four notch shims gave us another 0.6. So we were getting some consistency of anywhere from a half to about 0.7 degrees according to this Hunter alignment rack uh, every time we would change and go up a notch. The final readout with the four notch shims was six degrees on both sides, a total of two and a half degrees of correction. So what does that tell us? With a flat radius arm, we can get up to 2.5 degrees. Again, that'll be slightly less on the two and a half and three and a half inch lifted vehicles. But that is a ton of correction over a stock vehicle. That should address pretty much anybody that needs the correction. And if not, you still have your ball joint. You can always add up to a two degree shim to compound that correction, putting you, I mean, if it is a true two degrees at about four and a half degrees of correction. For the guys who are calling us, with a leveling system installed and they're saying that they've got negative caster or one degree, those guys would benefit from a, a set of these adjustable radius arms maxed out as well as a maxed out ball joint shim. Uh, and when I say maxed out, I mean within their adjustment, but you're not binding anything on the Super Duty. Everything there is happy. Uh, it just took a couple different steps to kind of get you there. 99.9% .9 of people are gonna utilize the two notch shims or the three notch shims. The cool part is these are mutually exclusive side to side. There's nothing that says that you can't use the four notch on the passenger side and the three notch on the driver's side to get one degree less correction on the driver's side. The truck's gonna pull to the side with less caster. So if you do a little bit lighter on the driver's side and you're looking to correct for road crown because you're not spending a lot of time in the dirt and that's you know basically what you're looking for, you can dial in your alignment however you would like to on here. I wouldn't recommend jumping any more than one notch. You don't wanna run the one notch on the driver and the you know four notch on the passenger because basically all you're doing at that point is getting a ton less caster on one side than the other so it's going to be a huge split you'll get some leaning to the truck you're going to be binding your axle bushings so your axle will be under tension you you won't like what that feels like so if you are going to do a differentiator side to side i recommend you keep it within about a notch or so so why the comment that this isn't really an exact science? John and I were going back and forth on which shims he wanted to leave in. Like any Super Duty owner, he wanted to err on the side of more caster than less. All of his readings were good. All were acceptable. The six was a little bit higher than we would normally like to see a customer run. But if that's what you want and that snappy return to center, then you can do it without binding anything. 
he ended up wanting to go for the three notch shims at that 5.4 degree caster reading. We put the shims back in, we reset everything on the machine, rolled the thing back forward, fired it again. Uh, it went up almost half a degree. We were at basically 5.9 degrees on both sides with the shims that had read 5.4 before. So not sure exactly where that deviation comes from, um, but it's why when people are trying to nail down to the you know 10th degree, whatever it happens to be on these alignments, it's not that exact of a science. You want to be in a realm where the truck drives good. These numbers, these ranges, all that you're trying to accomplish. You're not trying to get green across the board. You're not trying to get to a specific number. You're trying to get the truck to drive properly. John's truck drove properly with our fabricated radius arms before our adjustable radius arms came into the picture. So we were kind of getting into what the science behind the feeling was uh, in this video and taking it to domestic and, and running through all the shim choices that we have here. But the point is you now have a lot more options to get that end result, which is a truck that tracks straight, drives great, and you've got the radius arms on there that look great. It gets you the extra tire clearance from the pocket here. You know, get the limit straps for that shock protection on those expensive King or Fox shocks that we've got, the serviceable arms. I mean, there's there's countless reasons to run the radius arms. Uh, and now we've added another reason too, is we are, you know, one of the only guys out there. I mean, I say one of, but I believe we're the only people out there. I just don't like to make absolute statements, but but um, let's just go ahead and do it. What the hell? We're the only guys out there offering this type of caster correction system at the axle without binding anything else in an arm that's as strong as this one is. So um, we took the, the best product on the market and we made it better. I just want to throw another shout out to Domestic Diesel. Uh, we've been trying to schedule this in with them for a couple weeks. Their shop is always packed. It's not getting any less packed. Uh, they took an entire afternoon, spent their time with me, cleared their alignment rack, gave me a couple of their best texts there. Um, uh, you know, Jose, namely, busted his ass for us for four or five hours. I, I really appreciate them doing that. Uh, if you ever need anything from those guys, Domestic Diesel, again, is in Chino. Quick Google search will find their information. But uh, longtime Carly installers, and uh, we really appreciate them working with us on this. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in to another video. If you've got any questions for me, hit the comment section. Uh, give us a phone call. Shoot us an email. Send us a message on Instagram. Send us a message on Facebook. There's about a thousand ways to get a hold of us. And again, man, we'd love to get nerdy on this stuff. So we'll see you on the next round. Otherwise, we'll talk to you in the comments.